made millions of dollars. Where do you have this in a major city? It's one of the biggest moments in history. What's up guys? Welcome to Sydney, Australia. This is where I was born and raised, so it always feels crazy coming back here. Australia may be the slowest first world country in terms of pace of life that I've experienced. Every time you come back here, it doesn't matter which country I've flown in from. I just literally came from Bali, in the middle of the jungle, with nothing going on. All I was hearing was birds chirping and fucking crickets. And somehow, Australia is still slower than that. There's six million people here. We're in the middle of downtown. Somehow it still feels slower, but that's the way of life here. If you are young, hungry, motivated, dedicated, and you've just got that fire inside of you, like I did, then in your earlier years, this is not the best place to thrive. My energy and who I was as a person did not fit into Australia. I had to go to America and then realize that everybody else around me had a very similar drive and mentality to me. And only once I felt like I had the right peers around me and I felt like I fit in, that's when I started to thrive. So see the world, see if you fit in somewhere else because purely sometimes getting out of the same old environment can help a lot of people thrive. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, and if you're not, please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, drop me a message and let me know you've come from today's video. I'm only gonna be here for a week, so it's gonna be a very quick trip, but now it's time to go to the next place, so. As a young man, these were my stomping grounds. I have not been back here in a few years, so I'm excited to do this run. Probably one of the best views in the world to do this run. Insane. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put AKs in the bank. Let's go. Yo. Mm -mm. Wow, man down, man down. You ain't really bad. Pat down, pat down. I don't give a fuck right now, right now. Why everybody judge like Simon Cow? All up on my IG, I undercover. But you don't like me, suck your mother. If a nigga try me, Yo. won't recover. If Aye. you don't like me, Aye. Mm -hmm. Pretty in a real life, mm -hmm. and a gram. Where you get that ass from? I, God damn. I don't want a Rari, but I can. Free on my army, too lad. No dark hole, got the strap for them. Scared the whip like Sebastian. Uh, uh, they don't wanna see me, no shank uh, on them. Man, I bought my man, I wrote. Mm -mm. This is one of the biggest moments in history, I think. Like, in terms of evolution with humanity, I think AI will be one of the biggest changes that we've ever experienced. The stock market has rallied a lot, especially in the tech sector, because people are betting on AI. Now, AI is still not profitable. There is no clear vision in sight for most of these companies. They're just spending money and hoping for the best. But I think that it's gonna pay off. You know, like a lot of people say, this run up in the stock market is unjustified and it's very similar to the dot-com bubble and everything is gonna collapse and crash. Even though we're in the very, very early stages, this is something different. If you're investing in stocks that are more tech-based, more AI-based, I just don't see it's slowing down, in my opinion. I really don't know. Like, I'm so heavily invested in the AI space right now that I think it's just gonna be exponential growth from here. We are still early days. You know, a lot of people used to talk about crypto saying like, oh, we're still early, we're still early. And so they're investing, assuming that blockchain is gonna take over and it's gonna revolutionize everything. But this is what AI is. AI will take over everything. And if you're able to invest into all the companies that are gonna reap those rewards, these are some of the biggest money-making years potentially in history. If Elon Musk is able to execute, if a lot of these other companies are able to execute, because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to execution. A lot of people can overpromise and underdeliver. There's gonna be a few winners and a lot of losers. If you're willing to hold through, it's probably one of the biggest times in history, in my opinion, to be invested in the stock market. From this point onwards, I can see like a clear, 10x in some stocks just in a couple years i just have a lot of conviction and faith and when you have that conviction and faith you don't listen to the noise you don't listen to anybody else those are the moments that define you yeah. i came in it bitch like a giant yeah. two guns on my side i'm ready to slain slain slipping my shit throw my shit in the sky you know that i bang song i'm rolling up these bitches all the time you know that i smoke yeah. so for anybody that's been following me for a long time you would know this man right here mr william singe if you don't know him, this man right here has played a very, very big part in my life. You were my best friend growing up as a child. You were there during both of our very transformative years. We have a lot of crazy memories together. We experienced almost everything in life for the first time together. And then we became business partners, which then took us around the world, made millions of dollars, and had some crazy fucking years. For anybody that doesn't know, should we take them on a trip down memory lane? Roll the clips. Roll the clip. <laughs> 
Roll the clips. Mr. William Singe. William Singe. Will Singe. Will Singe. That's my manager, Julian. Two sold out shows. It's good to be standing in Austin, Texas, but it's like giving me butterflies. Young star in the building. Don't let Hollywood ruin you. Those are some crazy memories. We did a lot. We both met because we were both very young, the same city, both pursuing music. We were very inspired and motivated to become musicians. We used to always sleep over at each other's houses, make music all the time. We, we, we grew up as young kids, just like with big dreams. Just the journey that we had was wild, like from one thing to the next. Because when we were both young, I think like we were around 14, we did this video. So we posted this video to YouTube. You remember it? It was called All About YouTube. All About YouTube. <laughs> And we sung this song, and I swear, like, the next day it had a bunch of views. It had like 100,000 views. 100,000 100, views. 100,000 views back then. Was, yeah, that's like having 10 million now. Yeah. Because YouTube was just beginning. All of a sudden, I had this, this email from this guy who was the manager of YouTube. Yeah, that's right. He wanted to meet us, me and Will. And because he was the manager of YouTube, he could just essentially press one button and blow you up. Yeah. He pitched me and Will to essentially create a group. We're going to do a duo. At 14 years old, I was going to be the rapper, you were going to be the singer, and then he was going to manage us. But we were so young and at the time, we ended up not pursuing this duo project. Yeah. And then, I think like a year later, I was doing my music project, you were doing your music project. I was starting to do well, and then I had this idea to start a music festival. Right. And I sort of spoke this into existence. I was like a little bit nervous. I didn't really know whether it was going to be successful, but I took every dollar that I had made from all the things that I was doing. Yeah, ended up selling out. And because you were my best friend at the time, I put you on the lineup yeah. and you performed on stage. And we were both like these young kids. We're like looking around and I was like, bro, what the fuck is going on right now? He's 17 years old and you put on a solo out event at Luna Park. That's amazing success, mate. So then as the as the festivals are happening, I got offered to go on like this small little tour in Greece. Yeah. And I wanted to bring him with me. You ended up coming to Athens and we did like this little mini tour in Greece. This is before this is uh, just after ID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ID. And then same, same period. Yeah, yeah. But before you guys yeah, way, managing. Yeah, yeah, way before. I, I would have been 16 or 17. Then I moved to America. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I moved to America and during that time, like I had, it was a bit of a rocky period for me because I ended up like sort of fucking up my life. I ended up during this period working with Timmy Trumpet. Right, so I started yeah. like learning about marketing and artist management and all this stuff works. And then you came off X Factor. You're, right. in a, you're in a boy band. And I hadn't seen you in like a year. Yeah, I hadn't seen you in a long time. And I remember we were going around and like there were just thousands of girls everywhere for you guys because you were really popping at the time. And then you kept doing your thing and then eventually it was getting to a period where you wanted to Ranch exit boy. this group and, and do your own thing. We then talked about all the things that we wanted to do. And I came in with some tweaks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I came in with some marketing. The, market, the marketing side and just like how to actually like push things globally like that was where you came in because I was just recording songs yeah you're recording songs and then I came in with a strategy of like how can we actually get people to, to see and hear this yeah so we ended up touring the whole world we went practically to every country <laughs> every major city in the world and then we met with every record label in the states yeah we go from your bedroom to making your covers to then selling out tours all over the world and now we're in LA and we're around so many celebrities, we're at Jamie Foxx's house, staying in these crazy mansions. And then you had this massive song that went top five in like 30 countries. It's got how many on YouTube? Pull it's it up right a, now, it's coming up. It's there almost, it a, it's almost a, yeah, almost a billion. This man right here is a very pivotal person in my life. I owe you for a lot of my success, oh. a lot of my education. Without you, I would have never been exposed to so many things that we did, like working with some of the best music producers and songwriters. Like that for me was very eye-opening. Just through our journey and like, you know, being able to be next to you all those years was like massive. And I, I will have those tools and those skills, even for business my whole life. Like I learned so much about being a businessman managing you because I had to pick up the phone like 50 times a day and work out your deals and like try to figure out how to get your fees higher. I remember his first show I booked him for like $400 and then like towards the end I'm like booking your shows for $50,000. And it's, just, it's the same vice versa bro. Like I don't, like I would definitely not be in the position I've been in or have the experiences and, and the mental like know-how of a lot of things if it wasn't for you man. One of the best things is that even though we don't work together anymore we were able to 
part ways still being very good friends. Yeah. And that's why, like, you know, we're, we're going to be very close friends for the rest of our lives. And you don't see that very often. Like, you don't see business relationships, especially from people that were that close of friends, that just end well. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no. It doesn't. It doesn't usually end that well, and so I'm very grateful that we were able to continue being friends. Yeah, and I'm, I'm stoked to see everything that you do and put out, and I'll always support you. Oh, right. I'll always be here for you. As a Same mate. here, man. Yeah. And if well, you're not, better not say that. Eh? Right. <laughs> Make sure you go follow, subscribe, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Put your MySpace, MySpace. there. MySpace. <laughs> Where are we off to now? Cigar lounge spot. <laughs> Let's go. Time to get a coffee. Crazy. Even in winter, it's such a crazy place to walk around. Like, where do you have this, that view, in a major city? I heard that Cape Town is maybe sort of similar, but yeah, Sydney is. Sydney's a beautiful place. But now I've got to get that coffee, and it's what <laughs> too late for most places. That's our only shit thing about Australia is everything here closes too early. It's like 3 p.m. Almost everything is already closing. There's a big difference between Australia and the rest of the world when it comes to coffee culture because Australians live and die by their coffee and if you start a business or a cafe and you serve mediocre coffee you will very quickly go out of business and that's why Starbucks, practically the only country where Starbucks failed, was Australia. What do you think of this hotel? Oh, so, I noticed that my bed sheets had not been changed for four days. I called them up and they said, oh, we only change those when you request it. And I said, but surely after a couple days, right, you'll just do it? It's been four days. And they're like, oh no, you have to call to request it. Mind blowing. Four days? Crown? Seems like they just don't care. Maybe the hotel is just not their main source of income. Maybe it's the casino. And so it's not a priority for them to take good care of this place. They don't care about the guests. They don't care about the experience. It's disappointing. It's very disappointing when you're paying thousands and thousands per night and to have such bad service. You know, I tried to book the presidential suite and they were so rude and obnoxious that it made me feel like they don't deserve any form of promotion. You know, I love this city, but this is just kind of dampened my experience here. So I'm gonna leave today go somewhere else. But yeah, I hope that they step up their game soon. But maybe it's not a priority for them. Yeah. I came in it bitch like on giant yeah. went two guns on my side on rid of the slime slime.